All right, so I'm sitting here with Tom Stockham, and um, he's going to tell you a little bit about his company and then um, his opportunity space and how he decided to start up this whole company. All right, are you ready, Tom? I'm ready. So, company is called Experticity, mm -hmm. and uh, we started this actually now uh, several years ago, and um, the founding story of the business was that uh, I was uh, busy as usual, and I got a call from my brother who said, hey, let's go on a bike ride, let's go up and ride the Crest Trail. And I said, are you kidding? I have no time to take out in the middle of my day and go up and ride the Crest Trail. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, look, dude, it is so <laughs> beautiful and the leaves are amazing and we've really got to get up there and take advantage of this. This is a rare opportunity. So I went and when I got there, there were nine other people that all of whom were too busy to be there. Um, uh, but he talked them into going on this ride and then I noticed that nine out of the ten people were riding Santa Cruz bikes. And I thought, wow. My brother is this guy who's had this influence on these people to, to break away from their lives and go out and do some fun thing. And he's inspired all of us that buying a Santa Cruz bike would make our biking lives better. And yet, Santa Cruz has no idea he exists. And he gets no love for this role he plays in making all of our lives better. And I thought, we should fix that. We should, how could you put that in a bottle? How could you package that up and make that tangible? And so we set about building experticity. Our mission is to identify, uh, empower, and reward all of the people whose passion, experience, and knowledge makes them the source of advice and inspiration about what to buy and do. And uh, so, anyway, that, we started on that path now several years ago, and uh, here we are now with hundreds of brand clients. Brands pay us to tap into these passionate experts who the world seeks out for advice and recommendations. Mm -hmm. And um, these people do it not because they're getting paid or not because that they, they need a, a little uh, a vig or anything like that. They just do it because they want you to love the thing they love, it could be fashion, it could mm -hmm. be cooking, it <laughs> could be uh, uh, pets, it could be photography, it could be biking. Um, these people want to share their passion and because they are just so into it, everyone seeks them out for advice. Mm -hmm. They become the person that everyone turns to for advice. We've now built a network of more than a million of these experts. Wow. who we've credentialed and we add new credentials to their profiles every day. Mm -hmm. And we think that if we're successful, it, it, we become this transforming force in the way commerce works. Mm -hmm. Retail is changing so quickly, you know, stores are closing and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And no one wants more advertising. We're getting really good mm -hmm. at ignoring advertising, all of us. Um, uh, no human is saying, ooh, could you advertise to me some more? <laughs> and in a world where retail, physical retail and retail in general is just changing so quickly and no one wants more advertising, what do we all want? We, we want help from mm -hmm. people who we can trust for advice. Who know what they're doing. Who know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's what it is. Yeah, see, so that's really awesome. And the, the cool part about that too is um, with my job at Snowbird, that's been a big part of Snowbird as well is through experticity, we are able to... Um, get gear and things like that and then we can talk to the kids that we're teaching and things like that which yeah. is really awesome and well and they look up to you yeah. and they say well if Jade's wearing that <laughs> that's gotta be the right thing and they go and they feel more confident or their parents yeah, you know the ones exactly. who like they're, they're like I don't know what to give my little kid or I don't know which skis to buy them we can be like oh I got this really cool brand for you yeah, yeah. And so I it know benefits. more about it I own it mm -hmm. and, so. yeah so that's really cool um, alright so I guess my next couple questions, it's kind of a big cluster of them, is basically the first one would be, um, how does value and use affect your business? So we talked a little bit before this about value and use and the separate values to get a deeper understanding, but basically it's more just um, your company right now and 
Um, do you want a better further explanation or do you have a... Well, so if I understood yeah, correctly, right. it's just what is our exchange of value with our customers yes. and how are they using us? Mm -hmm. So um, uh, basically, we think of ourselves as having two sets of customers. Okay. We have the customers who are the brands who pay us mm -hmm. and we have our customers who are the experts and they really are at the core of our value and exchange. our existence. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, for the brands, the product companies, companies like the North Face or others, mm -hmm. um, what we're doing is saying to them, hey look, you're relying on a whole bunch of people who you'll never meet mm -hmm. to be your voice, to be your mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are gonna ask them for recommendations about brands and products like yours. We can help those people become more likely to recommend you. Mm -hmm. And we can help make them smarter about you. We can help give them firsthand experience with your products. Um, and uh, pay us. Mm -hmm. And we'll help you build a relationship with these people and help them be smarter and better about your products and brands. Yeah. We'll also help you get insights learned from them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they have deeper insights about what you could do to improve your brand than other people. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll will help you amplify what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're, they're typically great creators of content, so we'll gather, for example, photographs they do that you can use on your Instagram marketing and things like that. Yeah. But uh, typically a senior marketer is our customer. Okay. And um, uh, the brand is paying us because it's really hard by any other means for them to build a relationship with these people mm -hmm. who are their mouthpiece. Yeah. And are their most passionate uh, uh, advocates. Mm -hmm. For the expert, the expert, we're helping to get on the inside with the brand. So if, if you are really passionate about skiing, for example, the snowboard example, mm -hmm. part of what drives you is, and, and part of your motivation set is just, man, there are these brands that fuel your passion. They are the thing that helps you do the thing you love most. Mm -hmm. And we can help get you on the inside. We mm -hmm. can help you get information that other people can't get. We can help you get access to buy directly from the brand, mm -hmm. um, uh, typically at wholesale. Okay. And we can make your voice more clearly heard by that brand. You, the brand will now know you. And yeah. when you say something, um, they'll, listen. they'll listen in a different way. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the value exchange. Okay, cool. Um, I guess now we're going to distribution. So basically, um, like for instance, I guess we'll we'll go on with your products and things like that in all of your different companies that um, are a part of Experticity and going to the experts and things like that. How do you make that an easy transition from your from your group of companies that are basically wanting these people as their mouthpiece or as yeah. their voice? Yeah. You know how would how do you go about making that an easy transition between those two people? So, um, this one I'm not sure I understand. I think that when you say distribution, I mm -hmm. think of like how do we get our customers, how do we acquire them, and how do we get our products to them. Yes. Um, so, for our brand customers, yeah. we uh, reach out. We'll look at an industry like uh, culinary, for example, and mm -hmm. we'll start saying, okay, well, who are the most interesting brands in that space? Okay. Um, uh, and then we'll start going and calling them. Mm -hmm. Or, I, I mean, there are more elegant things to do, but it's, <laughs> it's kind of that thing. We start trying to make them aware yeah. that we exist and we have a solution for them. So brands like Allclad and Wusthof and Calphalon and KitchenAid and DeLonghi and uh, mm -hmm. a bunch of those brands are our clients now. Okay. But in the beginning, we just had to go and say, oh, are you relying on people that you don't know mm -hmm. to recommend your products and drive your sales, we well, you can help. Yeah. And so we, we do a lot of that, a lot of outreach through um, uh, media. We'll, we'll go speak at conferences. We'll go make phone calls. Mm -hmm. We'll put internet uh, ads on the internet and, and to drive and drive leads, those kinds of things. Yeah. For experts, um, uh, most of what happens is word of mouth. Okay. Like you, I, how did you find out about us? Through Snowbird and also just through, you know, word of mouth. 
probably more friends and family kind yeah. of things. Someone said, oh, you're on the ski, you should get this thing. You, mm-hmm. It will get, it will totally sort you out. You will yeah. be, have pro form access to hundreds of brands. Mm-hmm. That is a pretty compelling thing. We <laughs> yeah, offer. it is. And uh, uh, people hear about that mm-hmm. and then they, they download our app and then they start giving us evidence of their expertise. Mm-hmm. You know, do you actually work at Snowbird or are you just trying to get the deals? Yeah, so, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Anyway. And then also like along with, you know, say, because I know, don't you have a couple of experts in your group of people that um, kind of in your network that basically are, they're not necessarily with one organization, but they're expert in their own way of like, you know, like with fashion, like how do you know for sure? Does it have to be like a person with a company or does it have, to, or is it like someone who just shows and proves to you that they Got it. are? You know? So as I said, we have more than a million of these experts mm-hmm. and yeah, they're all, they're, they're, um, normal people mm-hmm. and, and evidence of their expertise might be where they work mm-hmm. or it might be they graduated from a fashion institute okay. or it might be that they uh, uh, are um, uh, we run these head-to-head competitions where people compete and winners uh, mm-hmm. you know are, are uh, become part of our network it's basically we just try and create credentials okay that enable someone who would say I think I'm an expert in fashion mm-hmm. to express and show evidence of their expertise. It could be yeah. projects they've worked on. It could okay. be who knows what. Anything that can prove to it, it, Exactly right. And we, that's part of the challenge of our business is we constantly try and learn, mm-hmm. well, what is the evidence that someone's an expert in photography or skiing or fashion? Yeah. So I guess that's a pretty good segue into the whole value in finance and fitness. So finance is basically like where you are now and how you got to this point and how you feel like, you know, you are now compared to where you started and so what would you say like you know from that first day you went biking to now you know how far you've come and everything that you've accomplished yeah. and you know your whole all basically with yeah. your finances maybe. so so we when we started we're like any company you don't have yeah. a lot you 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 start i my deep belief is that the best money a company can take is customer money like mm. if someone's willing to pay you for your product that's a great thing. Mm-hmm. Um, if no one's willing to pay you for your product, you don't have a company. <laughs> so yeah. people who go and try and raise money for things that are not even selling a product yet, yeah. that's a scary place to be. Yeah. Um, but we've raised some money from outside investors too along the way. Okay. Most of our money by far over time has come from our customers though. Um, and we do now tens of millions in revenue every year. Okay. But we aspire to do billions of dollars in revenue. Okay. And uh, we really do believe that these experts and helping insert into people's commerce experience real, trusted advice, recommendations, reviews mm-hmm. uh, is a transformational uh, uh, force in commerce. Yeah. And um, so we're going to go keep building this. Good. Always with experts at the center. Mm-hmm. That's a good. That's a good way to be. Um, so yeah, I guess that's kind of a pretty good answer for also you know fitness and like longevity of your company and things like that. You want to keep aspiring and building on top of those yeah. um, experts Look, and things. My, the, the my view is this, and mm-hmm. I said it a little bit up off the top. Yeah. Um, that uh, most. And I'll reframe it a little bit. But okay. Most <laughs> of retail, most of the stuff you and I buy mm-hmm. uh, at a store, mm-hmm. it could be at a, a REI, it could be at a, a photography store, it could be at Nordstrom, wherever it is. Most of that stuff, for the past 50 years, most of the retailers have mm-hmm. focused on um, price, like, you know, do they have the lowest prices? Mm-hmm. Um, variety, how many different items do they have in the store? Um, and logistics, like, oh, well, how quickly can I get it to you? And yeah. those kinds of things. And that's true, by the way, of Amazon. That's mm-hmm. true of Nordstrom. That's true of REI. That's true of Target. That's true of whatever. 
Yeah. What they haven't focused very much on is expertise. Mm -hmm. Like, is there someone there actually who can help you make the de right decision about what to buy? Yeah. And I don't know if you paid attention this week and saw Nordstrom's announcement about a store that actually has no inventory. Like, oh, really? The whole store is just dedicated to expertise, experts. It's a it's a wow. fashion consultant. Wow. In the store, mm -hmm. and they'll put stuff together for you, and then they'll order it. And, and get mm -hmm. it for you. It's a really interesting, to me, it's a really interesting realization that you, there is something different to do in, in retail and commerce, and mm -hmm. it is to center around expertise. Mm -hmm. Well, we think that is the future. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, no human wants any more advertising. I think we're all getting really good at ignoring ads. Mm -hmm. um, there are no ads in my Game of Thrones episodes. <laughs> um, I fast forward over the ads on television. I don't mm -hmm. even see the parts of my computer screen that are dedicated mm -hmm. to ads. Well, now with you know things like Netflix and uh, Hulu and HBO yeah. Go, there are no ads. You pay yeah. to have them not be there. Yeah, and exactly. You're uh -huh. um, so I think advertising is is. Uh, dollars that have been spent on advertising are going to shift away mm -hmm. because no one wants them. No yeah. one wants ads. It's not that they're going to go away altogether. It's just that no person is mm -hmm. wants more of them. Mm -hmm. um, dollars are going to shift to where people are going. And mm -hmm. people are going to go look for expertise. Yeah. Like, how do I find someone that I can trust Mm -hmm. who will help me make the right decision about spending my hard-earned money. Yeah. So, um, I just think that's a big trend for the next decade and beyond. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm really excited about where we're going. I totally agree. I think that's really awesome, especially with everything that's going on with, you know, stores and things like that, how stores, and they're saying that, like, within the next couple of years, that malls and things like that are just going to become, you know, not like no one's gonna really ever go there they're not gonna be very useful to people anymore because online shopping is such a big thing now yeah that also like you're right like where do you find you know because usually you're used to going into a store and being like what's cool what's new what's you know what's going on and you can't really find that in any way especially since we're so trying to ignore advertising and everything like that yeah. and, you know we're yeah. we're pushing all that away um so that's really awesome um so I guess my last question is, do you have any advice for future entrepreneurs and things like that with different ideas that are going on in the world and you know starting up companies and things? Yeah, I, my main advice is uh, if you want, if you think you may want to go try to build something and be entrepreneurial, go try to build something and be entrepreneurial. <laughs> Just go do it. Mm -hmm. um, you can't theorize your way into mm -hmm. what it is. You can't imagine your way into what it is. You have to just go do it. Mm -hmm. So go. And go then for it becomes it. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, you know, talking with me today and oh, everything. Awesome. Good. Well, sweet. We're done.